factor that oftentimes uh, when you're playing, you know, listen, watching Dragon Ball and Vegeta, um, he, he, he sinks into the character so deeply you for, kind of forget he's talented because it's so real. Because there's those actors who can do that. And they end up, you know, kind of not being the main star all the time. They, but then after they die, they go, oh my god, that guy was amazing. Um, I think you're kind of like that. Like when you get the whole Vegeta thing, <laughs> that it's really the best. Like it's really, you're so deep. You know what I'm talking about artistically? You know? You're spot. I'm, I'm Spock, is what he said. Well, kind of, yeah. Or, 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 or Philip Seymour Hoffman or somebody like that. Who, you know, so good that he just blends in that you don't notice because it's so real. I, it's amazing. I just, Vegeta is one of those characters, though, that you, if you. If you just watch him long enough, I don't see how anyone could do a poor job voicing Vegeta. He's just such a, to me, a very obvious character to play. Like he's so, I don't know, maybe it's just because I've worked on him for so long, but to me, Vegeta is a very easy character to jump into most of the time. And in fact, the hardest character I play on Dragon Ball is Piccolo. Yeah. You know, it's, he sounds like a simple character because he's just, you know, a dude who trains uh, Gohan like a dog and then, uh, <laughs> And then hangs out in an iceberg and, and eats sense of beans or whatever. But uh, he's actually a far more complicated character for me because I don't, it's very unclear as to kind of what his motivations are throughout the series. But Vegeta has a very, very clear storyline. I think you, and we're just going back and compliment each other here. <laughs> I think Goku is an impossible character to play because he is not a traditional hero. And and we, we get into a lot of discussions when we're working on Dragon Ball, like, okay, how would Goku feel about this? Because there's no clear answer to that question in any case, you know what I mean? We're yeah. always debating, like, okay, would Goku be knowing in this situation, or would Goku be a complete idiot in this situation? <laughs> well, and the weird thing is, is Goku will be fundamentally an idiot, and then every once in a while he'll do this like strategic move, for example, like he, when he was trying to uh, keep... Gohan's secret power hidden. Now that's some pretty deep, long game thinking. And so you go, wait a second, is Goku really just playing a dipshit and keeping his cards so <laughs> close to his chest that he's kind of a sociopath and he's fooling everyone? <laughs> he's really nice and friendly. Or the you know, <laughs> was he just going like, it's obvious. Yeah. Right? I mean, Gohan's going to do it, right? Yeah, yeah that, but right? we don't know. And so we, we, we debate about it. And I, I usually play him from a well, I'll let Chris compliment me more because I don't want to <laughs> um, No, I, it's an interesting answer. How do you, like, what is your favorite? My, well, I don't know about favorite lines. Cause Over, what's your favorite Goku, though? Like, do you like him when he's being an idiot? Do you like him when he's being sentimental or, like, when my, he's angry? My favorite Goku... Those guys are talking to me with funny voices and I don't My favorite Goku mo moments, I... I I always like it when, when it's like uh, he's either bent down or uh, uh, or he's been pummeled down or, or, or he's been gone for a while and then he just shows up and he's bring it. Like when he's in that yeah. mode and he's not screaming and it's like in Resurrection F when they do the thing and then Goku's like, that all you got? I love moments like that when he's just focused and calm and in the zone. The powering up is not exactly enjoyable to do. It can be cathartic. And I did enjoy it. And Battle of Gods, where I did the big crazy scream that you guys saw probably on video because it had like a sh shit ton of views, uh, where I will not let you destroy my world. Uh, that was really fun. That's a moment where scream where I had an idea because Moscow did not do that in Japanese. I had an idea I wanted to run with it. Chris let me, and it just turned out great. And it was just you know, an artistic choice that I made that worked. I like those kind of screams, but in general, it's just when when Goku's been gone and he comes back and he walks real slowly through all his friends and he's ignoring all of them, saying, hey, "You're back in the car." He's just Back. He's just walking through. He doesn't even say, yeah, I'm back and hug anybody. He just shows up, walks real slow, he's glowing. Like that, I like, because I'm not having to say anything. Um, yeah. And it looks cool. Um, yeah, just stuff like that, or clever moves like instant transmission into Kame. Kamehameha, instant transmission, ha. Ah, you know, like that. I like stuff like that. I'm going to talk all day. I'm not well. Oh, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> no, that, I, that's interesting to me. Uh, Sean and I work really hard together, and Sean and I work really well together. Once you work with someone for like 15 or 16 years, it, it can get a little complicated sometimes because it's like, all right, I gotta call my brother and do some work. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we fight. You know, yeah, we, 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 you know, we argue. We, we, I think we got to an age and a place, and it really is, it can, uh, coincides with my level of maturity because trust me, Chris has never been the immature one in, in our relationship. Uh, you know, but we got to a place where we just, I don't think we're ever going to fight again because uh, we're really good about working on our issues. But yeah, I've gone Super Saiyan in the booth. And, and, and you know, and walked out and 
been pissed off and you know that's part of being an artist you know you're channeling a lot of energy and a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas and a lot of emotions you know and 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 when you're in the booth you're a raw uh, you get into this raw baby state you know this original mind state and then you start channeling all these emotions and so you're not really in control and i'm not really good in control of my emotions to begin with so then when chris says something that he thinks is funny or he tells me what to do or whatever and it hits me the wrong way i'm just like ah, you know and it's, it's especially hard when you have to come off of an argument like that and go all right sean Let's, uh, let's be happy-go-lucky Goku for yeah. a while. It's, yeah. it's a little easier when you're angry and you can just go, all right, just do another take. Yeah, yeah. Like it's easy when you're you're angry about something and you go in the mood and get to play an angry do you, do you Do you avoid your wife when you get home after I avoid Vegeta? everybody after I record of Vegeta because I am typically fairly angry after yeah. I get out of the session. <laughs> well, you just channel all that. You're just standing in a room for hours just thinking, I'm an angry guy and I pretty much hate everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then you do something wrong, and you have to do it again, and then you have to do a large, loud scream for about five minutes, and then you find out it's not right, or it doesn't look right, so you're like, fine, do it again, do it again, do it again. And I'm, I'm directing myself in those cases, and I'm particularly hard on myself. Uh, and my engineers will sometimes go like, dude, it's fine, it's fine. Like, no, I'm doing it again, I'm doing it again, I'm doing it again. I get kind of pissy, so. But they just all know. Sometimes I'll come home, my wife will go, you've been recording Vegeta today, haven't you? I'm like, yes, I have. <laughs>